So everyone, welcome to the Power Play of CJ. Today we're focused on why the Minnesota Wild will regret the Suter and Parisi signing sooner rather than later. Um, obviously, they're both playing outstanding hockey. You know, I mean, to put either one of them down, they're both world-class players and players that I know for a fact will be representing Team USA at the Olympics a year from actually 11 months from now, a little more than that. Um, you know, Parisi's got 15 points, seven, eight goals, seven assists on, in 21 games. Suter got 14 assists. They're both playing very well. You know, really bringing some veteran presence to that lineup. But, um, you know, the, the salaries, I mean, the cap's going down next year, and we know Leopold was trying to push the salary cap down this year. Um, you know, $12 million each of the next two years, $11 million in year three, years four through eight, $9 million, uh, $8 million in year nine, $6 million in year 10, uh, $2 million in year 11, and then $1 million in 12 and 13. So, and the salary cap is $7.5 million all the way through. Now, if Minnesota still doesn't have a goaltender that's going to win the Stanley Cup, either in the organization or in the roster, it's Backstrom's not the guy. Uh, I'm not sold on Hackett. And, uh, you know, they got to go and get someone somewhere, whether it's Bernie in L.A., uh, you know, Vancouver, for some reason, chooses to hold on to Luongo and trade tonight. Actually, they want to trade a goal in the division, Vancouver, so it's not happening. You know, someone out there for them, you know, to get you over the hump, because I don't trust their goaltending situation as it is. And, uh, you know, Minnesota's not playing well. They're the eighth seed. And then the second thing is, you got a ton of skilled guys, Charlie, young guys, I mean, young and skilled guys, both of them. Charlie Coyle's playing outstanding hockey. Got really good to see him play with Coy, who and Parisi on the top line, really bringing some grit and tenacity, the uh, the pride of Weymouth, Massachusetts. But, you know, Jonas Brodin has been outstanding. I love watching him play, and I believe within two to three years, by the time the century level deal is up, um, at the end of three professional years in North America, he will be better than Ryan Suter. And that's something I'm not going to back down off. He will be a better player than Ryan Suter in three years. Just the way it goes. Those guys are both in the first year of their entry-level deals, as is Jason Zucker, who was playing great in the minors, and that's three goals in seven games with the Wild. Johan Larson's another one playing his first year of pro hockey. Gramland, who struggled at times, but is still a world-class player, truly elite skill set. He's actually one of the best plus-minus players, Gramland. Uh, he's, he's even in 18 games. He's only at six points, but you know, come around. I think that's more product of not only adapting the the pace and speed of North American hockey, but also Mike Yo's system. But you know, those guys. And then you're looking at, you know, Zach Phillips in the minors, Matthew Dumba, who I think will be a stud down the line. All those guys are going to be up for new deals, and you're going to have to part ways with a few of them. And those guys are all, you know, five to ten, you know, five to nine years younger than Suter and Parisi. So those in where they're both 28, Zach and Ryan. So in five years, they're going to be 33, entering the post prime years of their career. The post, meaning after you non English speakers, um, and it's going to be tough for them. It's because it's also in three years, Coil and the company are all going to be up for new deals, and you're going to have to cut bait, and it's going to be a lot easier to move your younger guys, and uh, you know you're going to get a fleece because it's going to be like Chicago where they had to part ways with a lot of pretty good bit players on their team after Stanley Cup to the salary cap considerations. And I think it's going to be the same thing because in five years you're going to have two 33-year-olds with uh, with eight years left in their contract at $7 million a year. I mean, really? You know, so it's going to be tough. But, uh, you know, hopefully Minnesota knows what they're doing because otherwise they will be in salary cap hell for over a decade. That's all I can step out of the power play with CJ on how the Suter and Parisi signings may backfire sooner rather than later for the Minnesota Wild. Stay tuned for episodes of the season and beyond. Later, guys.